Pikery, who with Dai Reese. Dai, how are you this morning? Hi, Mike. Yeah, great to be joining you today on day two of the Asian 7 Series. So, um, last tournament of the season. And uh, played in um, particularly difficult conditions today, I sense. Yes. Yeah, it's a bit hazy, all right? So, we've just had the two bowl semi-finals. And uh, Singapore and China, I believe, were successful. You are surprised China didn't make it through to the Cup quarterfinals? They had a little hiccup against the Philippines, didn't they? Yeah, disappointing season for China. Um, talking to their delegation yesterday, meeting with them to see how Hong Kong can, can help progress some of their areas. And they had high hopes of reaching a semi final in this competition. Mm -hmm. um, fifth in the series going into the tournament and, uh, and really missing being at the Hong Kong Sevens on an annual basis. Uh, but of course, it's become tight to qualify now. So, um, yeah, they'll be disappointed not, uh, not actually achieving a quarterfinal spot. It was a tight little pool, that one, with uh, Japan, China, and Philippines. What we're finding now, Mike, is that, you know, they're, they're the top six, top top eight teams that are really on any given given weekend and release of players can really push each other. Obviously, you know, Hong Kong and Japan and uh, are out there, but I sense that we could see some upsets this weekend with um, Japan bringing a, a reduced squad because they were in the Gold Coast last weekend. And... Um, and also uh, looking at the, the changes in Malaysia have made, a um, young and experienced team. But some consistency next game up is, uh, is going to be very interesting in that the consistently picked, selected team has been the Philippines, who have shown some great form. And, and of course, Sri Lanka have managed to continue to pick their consistent team. So this will be probably the pick of the, of the quarterfinals, I sense. Good call, die. So first quarterfinal of the morning in the cup competition, Sri Lanka playing in their jade. And uh, blue strip, and uh, the Philippines in their blue and red. It's a nice jersey, that Sri Lankan one. We've had some nightmares <laughs> over the last <laughs> few months trying to pick their numbers, but uh, perfect today, no complaints. <clears throat> so, yes, Philippines had a roller coaster ride, didn't they? They were 19 nil down against China, and they came back with a uh, half to, get, to win 21 19. Uh, yellow card helping them there, and then. Uh, and then uh, just losing to Japan 21-19 as well. So that was a good effort from them. And uh, the Sri Lankan team, well, they've been pretty consistent. They, uh, they beat Kazakhstan 31-12 and uh, pushed aside Malaysia 26-10 as well. Yeah, very familiar faces in the, in the Sri Lankan team. Some new guys in the Philippines that haven't been, went at the Asian Games uh, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, game on and uh, I think it'll be a good, good quarterfinal. The Sri Lanka playing left to right. Andrew Wolf under the ball there, but uh, claiming he didn't uh, touch it, so plays on quickly. There's uh, Gareth Holgate. Gets it out wide. It's Harry Morris out there, who's uh, played a lot at scrum half, but he showed quite a bit of pace yesterday. The pace this morning was in reverse, though, first up with the ball carry. And that's nice work in the contact area from Sri Lanka. They'll get a penalty advantage here. As Philippines go away with the ball. So Sri Lanka with a couple of newbies as well. Uh, Marija, their captain, out. And also the little scrum half, Surya Bandara. But, uh, here's Patirana. And this is uh, Dunn, one of the two Fijians in the squad. And that breaks down. Unsuccessful there with their first foray with the ball. And that's a nasty put into the line out there from the Philippines, putting their players under all sorts of pressure. That was Alex Aronson, who got absolutely smashed. Here he is again, young American. With a Filipino mum. Solid defence again. That's become a real feature, hasn't it, Dai, with the... Yeah, I sense the al already in the first two minutes of the game, Mike, is it, it's the physicality of the Sri Lankans in the contact area going to train out muscle. The Philippines, the longer this goes, game goes on, uh, and, and the longer that the Philippines manage to stay in it, uh, the more chance they have. But the Philipp the Sri Lankans have come out of the, uh, the gate really, really intense contact area, winning the ball. That's an area Inter the interesting as well, Mike. Uh, I mean, you may, may be able to update me a little bit more on it, but interesting to see the two Fijians coming into Sri Lankan rugby. I think it's the, is it the first tournament they've played in for Sri Lanka. I think we saw Wangavulangi, didn't we, somewhere ah, in Hong, Hong Kong, Hong didn't we? Kong. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he's uh, he hit the scene pretty quickly in that tournament, along with Will Vara, their other wing. Had some real pace that weekend. And here is, uh, oh, it's Wangavulangi screaming for the ball, but he won't be needed. 
It's Ranjan, who loves to score a try. Fourth try this tournament for Danushka Ranjan, who plays centre in the 15s game, and uh, you can see the sense the outside break there, and away he went, though. They seem to bounce. So, uh, Sri Lanka are a real confidence team. Um, they, they, they come up against certain teams, you know, namely J Japan in particular seem to have the, the real press on them. But when they play against the, te like the teams that they believe in themselves and they believe they can win, and they've started this game, they believe they can beat, um, you know, the Philippines, and they've come out as if they're the world beating on the top side in Asia. And they, they must be particularly frustrating to be a, a coach of Sri Lanka at the moment because they've got some huge talent there. Mm, yeah, no, the uh, top two or three inches is where they need to work on, isn't it? Without a doubt, you know, the top sides, they tend to fold over. They, they always give Hong Kong a really tough game because they really, really believe they can do this. And yet they don't seem to perform particularly well against Japan. Yeah, we've seen some big blowout scores, uh, 50 points plus. Japan have put on them a couple of times in the last 12 months. Done again, who's, uh, he's one of the men who's leading from the front in the contact area, big strong man. And again, they're on attack. It's Ranjan again who gets dragged down five metres out. Quick ball, and it's Wonga Vulangi who whips around the blind side. Doesn't care if he gets too close to the post. Was uh, happy with the five points. And in contrast again, mate, you know, the Philippines seem to have come out in this game and, and are really struggling, like they did in the first 19-nil <laughs> scoreline yesterday morning against China. They seem to be still in the hotel. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Saunders brothers in the lineup for Philippines this weekend. We've got uh, some experienced players out there. Chris Everingham. Just going back and picking up on, on the Sri Lanka Fiji, and I don't know if you picked it up in the press recently with, um, I believe, three of Ben Ryan's training squad um, joining uh, the Sri Lanka setup. Um, it was an interesting article I read recently, and uh, so, but some. Um, issues there in that I think that uh, Sri Lanka thought that they could give them passports for the World Cup qualifier but of course you have to qualify in A B terms as well which is three, three years residency so it's an interesting moves around the world with the Olympics qualifiers just a year off so here is Everingham under this ball gets it just before Dunn arrives as well Joe Dunn and holds him up nicely again they managed to Weasel it back though, and it's Holgate takes the ball to the line, flips it over to the winger. And it's Stevenson, ex rugby league player. It's the turnover, Muta Tantri gets it away to Hapagoda. He's got some fleet feet on him, and uh, Wangabulangi too has the pace to outstrip and dots down and in the identical place from just a few moments ago. Shranka creating some great intensity, kicking long, pressing, pressing really hard putting the Philippines under pressure for the last three tries, pinning them back 10 metres from their own line. Some great intensity from Sri Lanka come out this morning firing, and uh, they'll pose a threat to the to the semi-finalists, whoever they meet, and that's the winner of uh, Hong Kong-Thailand game. So it's going to be a tough uh, tough ask, the semi-final for Hong Kong or Thailand. A new coach in the setup, Glenn Cristini. You know much about him? Have you done some reconnaissance? No, I don't. I, I'm... I know that uh, they, they struggled in the Asian Games a couple of weeks ago with a lack of a coach, and uh, they, they've acted quickly and moved uh, sharply to, to put someone in. And maybe that new new coach is having this new effect on the guys in intensity that I haven't seen from Sri Lanka for a few tournaments. So three tries to nil just before half time. Philippines, well, they're in a similar position yesterday. Wolf whips it out to Jake Letts, their skipper, Holgate. Very much the experienced spine of the team. Nice out wide. A <laughs> little lobby pass. It'll uh, leave Holgate with his heart in his mouth, but he sets off nicely, Holgate. And jets around the defence. Links up now. Runners on the inside. Quick ball here for Letts. And uh, marking up outside all right for Sri Lanka. But were they offside? Perhaps they were. I think the referee is playing on here. The Wolf again cuts inside, takes the contact, space uh, on the left there, but uh, decided to, to take the contact. The Muto Tantri does really well on his feet. But just a little knock on there. Good refereeing again then by Tim Beek. You know, he's right, right on the mark, seeing the first defence was a little knock on. 
a number of officials there may have given a penalty either way for contact area. Yeah, but there's a little knock on in the contact. And you have to be right on the ball to see those infringements. So it's great, great refereeing by Tim. So the hoot is blind for half time. We may just have one more play here. There's uh, Lex's. <coughs> debating with the referee there, but uh, they'll have the scrum put in. They really need to score just before half time here, Guy. To do with a little inspirational score to take them into the half. Philippines playing, and I know I talked to Mal Cavillo, who was over as their coach for, for, the, for the Asian Games. They're playing this deep pull out game, which is almost old fashioned, and they seem to be giving ground and not playing the game line particularly well. And it's mm. the pressure that uh, is being exerted by the uh, Sri Lankans. And this whole gate again, and this could be the inspirational piece we're looking for. Doesn't have the legs though, and the support's lacking as well. Gets there eventually, it's penalty advantage for Philippines here. Here's Letts, he's got Morris outside him. Elects to pass early. The cover comes across, Morris linking up again. Eventually with Wolf, who's a dangerous runner. We've seen once he gets his legs going, he's pretty tough to put down. The referee there just uh, telling the players to keep their hands off. They're off their feet, so another penalty. Let's again takes it quickly, and this time they yeah. score. And oh, he needs to get close to the post, but uh, the try will do it. There's the score they need it on the buzzer after the buzzer. Might have been Alex Aronson. We'll just uh, wait for confirmation. Yes, indeed, it was. A young man from San Francisco spent a uh, Winter at uh, the Eastwood Club in Sydney, uh, refining his skills. Found that very useful. Uh, Matt uh, Cullen, uh, the guy in charge of performance rugby in, in the Philippines, did a magnificent job over the last three years in seeking out and looking out for, for players to keep the volcanoes up at the top end of uh, Asian rugby. And um, picking up these guys and these talented guys um, from all over the world, really, but giving them some pride in playing for their, their mother country. So uh, he's done a great job. Yep. Oh, it's a real network they've got now, isn't it? And there has been a, an evolution, a quick evolution of players because uh, a lot of these guys are playing, paying out of their own pockets. And uh, there's only so long you can do that, I think, uh, with the passion that you've got. But uh, it's done a great job. Yeah, and, and, and the union as well, the Philippine Rugby Union, have, have moved a few. Gareth Holgate, now he's based, originally a, a Welshman, <laughs> of Welsh origin as well. Um, and I came across him in Cardiff University many years ago, but Gareth has been re relocated now to, to the Philippines and works for the Union on Development. So they're actually bringing some of these guys into the Philippines to develop the game. And I know Matt and the Union have got sort of uh, aspirations of, of ensuring that they develop local talent as well. So um, tough though when, you, when you're working off a, a non-rugby base in Asia, mm. uh, as we all the Asian countries know. Mm. But uh, an, a, a good approach to... to to profile their top team, so youngsters in the Philippines have seen the volcanoes on the Asian stage, and indeed in the Hong Kong Sevens uh, last year because they qualified uh, for the Hong Kong Sevens. Yeah, they had the World Cup appearance as well, along with you, you fellows, and, and Moscow, and uh, that was a great experience for them. But, uh, well, they've had to do all sorts of things to raise money: deodorant commercials, <laughs> underpants commercials. <laughs> Can you? Uh, is that something you'd like to see the Hong Kong lads uh, get involved oh, in? No, no, no. Mike, there, there's plenty of the Hong Kong, the hairstyles that are being uh, supported in the, in the team at the moment. They're all rock stars out there. And uh, yeah, the, the Philippines, uh, the, all the lads, I'm not frightened to strip off, get in front of uh, cameras for calendars and uh, underwear commercials. So um, the, less, the less opportunities they have in Hong Kong, the better. We can focus on the rugby. <laughs> yeah. uh, some of those uh, diaspora. The rugby players that have played for the Philippines will watch, be watching this game with interest this morning. All around the world, as you say, Di. And, uh, good morning or evening, wherever you are, watching this live stream. The Philippines have a bit of work to do. Sri Lanka starting very well and looking set. The Philippines just nibbling back uh, just before half time. So they showed yesterday that they've got the wherewithal to do it. Holgate kicks off. Dunn who receives. Patirana just leaving the ball last minute for him. Into country. He's done a good job in the contact area along with Dunn. Here's Hapogoda, the captain this weekend. Nice little kick and chase from him. 
And he might have too much pace for Holgate. I think he's going to outstrip Holgate. Yeah, brave effort from Gareth, but he just couldn't get to him. Upper goal to real speedster in the uh, mould of Surya Bandara, of course, their normal scrum half. They've got some wonderful talent in that position. Good try. Great little try. And when he kicked the ball, I thought that uh, the Philippines had it covered, but it was a, almost a diagonal chip. It wasn't a chip directly towards the 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 try line and it was the diagonal kick that took him away from the cover defense the the, the sweeper coming across and gareth was gareth holgate was stood a, a little bit too deep probably as a sweeper and then struggled to make up the ground in terms of pace great brave effort by gareth but uh, um, great little try as well individual try not what the philippines needed to start the, the second half mm -hmm. well, Anka, they've been uh, real improvers in the series over the last couple of years that's for sure as you say, it's the belief is following through now. I'm sure these Fijians will give them some uh, help as well as far as combating the Japanese. And I guess that's the model they're using, isn't it? Uh, we've seen a couple of Tongans and uh, Samoans for Japan make a difference. I think it's uh, it's that physicality and contact area skills that the mm. Trank have missed at the top end with the ability to break the line. Yeah. And, uh, certainly the Fijians give you that. Holgate again. It's Morris on the outside. Looks back, as you say, just dropping back with depth. Bring dropping back with depth and just, just dropping 20, 30 metres out. Yeah. It's worked this time. Yeah, <laughs> Bring him has come away. Not as fast oh. as he used to be in his younger days. Little one, two, though. Referee rules that uh, was a flat ball. So Everingham gets held up nicely, though, by Muta Tantri and uh, Villaratna. Break down the scrum there, moving forward. Really could have made more of that, I think. Um, yeah, a little bit, a great little break. It's a certain try, and, and then the pass to, uh, to um, sorry, lost his name. Wolf, lost his name. Wolf yeah. Uh, I was going to say Fox. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Uh, name name, links, name <laughs> Squirrel. Links. Wrong, wrong hanger. Wrong hanger. <laughs> I don't think Andrew Wolf would mind, because I called him Kenny Stern for a whole tournament. <laughs> Very happy. He wasn't happy, but he took it with good grace. So here they go again. They're on the deck. Alarm bells going now for Philippines, though. They're 17 points behind it. Oh, a little steal there. Cheeky stuff from Sri Lanka. On it goes to Mutu Tantri, who's been everywhere so far today. In fact, that's Vera Ratna, and he links up with Mutu Tantri. It's, it's a turnover here for the Philippines. It's Everingham again who tests his speed, but again he gets dragged down by Dunn, who absolutely smashes him. Strong man, Joe Dunn. And here's Wolf again. Tries to outstrip the defence. It's uh, Ranga Uwangi who uh, makes the tackle. And, uh, another knock on. In contact from Sri Lanka. Uh, just a shame that uh, they seem to just lack that flyer on the outside, the Philippines. Yeah, lacking that pace. I think Vinny, a um, uh, uh, young lad who actually played under 20s for Hong Kong, played for them on the wing in. Um, uh, in the Asian Games mm. and has figured. Um, I think he's gone back to exit the university, so he's obviously not been released, but they are lacking that, that killer pace or the instinct of weight. Yeah, Morris uh, doing a good job, but uh, traditionally a halfback uh, on one flank, Canadian, but yeah, just, uh, you're right, just making that sizzle on the outside. Got an attacking chance here. So this is the first of four quarterfinals for the cup. Hong Kong, Thailand coming up next. Japan, Kazakhstan, and Korea, Chinese Taipei. Chinese Taipei doing really well this weekend. Jake Litz takes it away quickly. Holgate. A nice stepping run there. That's wonderful stuff from Ryan Clark. He's a new boy on the block. And uh, look at the expediency that they're moving with there. Quick conversion, so they want to get back and have a crack here. Great little step, great little finish. Just come on. I think he's just come on, isn't he? Yes, yeah. yeah. He just came off the bench. And What's right. your philosophy around the, the back line there as far as first, second receivers? We see a lot of the playmakers standing two out these days. Is that right? We, we, we tend to have our playmakers in Hong Kong around with the first and first receiver, really. Um, and we with the other two guys, penetrators and finishers. Great little kickoff. Yeah. Holgate. Fantastic retaining possession. A little score you could make the last few minutes interesting. 
Here's up here. It's the ball out to Wolf. He tries his luck again. He might have the legs on Mutatantri, but that's a great tackle. He's playing really top four, Mutatantri. Oh. Enjoyed his performance. Wonderful skills from Apogoda. <laughs> nice handoff there too from Chaturanga, who tends to come on about this stage of the game. Give us a little two-minute cameo. Here he is again. Changes direction, gets into traffic though. Will need help and gets it from Rawate. Yeah. Oh, great call by the referee. Yeah. You see that so there. often with a with a player laying on the ball and, and, and protecting it, and it was a great call again. There's another new man on. It's uh, Kenny Stern. Oh, almost an intercept there. From Rawate. Surprised we haven't seen him earlier. Well, that could be game over, you'd think. Ten points margin and just a couple of seconds left in this one. Well, in the beginning, Mike, it looked as all one-way traffic. It looked as if it was going to be a, a cricket score, so to speak, but the Philippines have rallied, uh, probably gave away too much in the first five minutes of the game, first four minutes, and not able to come back into it. But the Philippines have rallied, and uh, I think, as I said at the beginning, this is the pick of the quarterfinals, the tighter one. Should have been a little bit more tight with the, if the Philippines had come out of the, out of the blocks a little bit quicker. Yeah, no, I fancy uh, Chinese Taipei in a hurry uh, Korea up as well. Oh, <laughs> there's time. a prediction. Yeah. No, there's uh, a couple of youngsters in the Chinese Taipei team. They're looking really good. Uh, their young playmaker, Chen Li, he's uh, added a real spark to the team. And the Koreans, obviously, just a bunch of youngsters yeah, okay. from the university. So it'll be an interesting one, I think. Yeah, and the Koreans look exceptionally good with with, with their pace, the yes. youngsters, but on the front foot, under, front foot <laughs> under pressure, <laughs> yeah. under pressure, inexperience, yeah, it breaks down. So yeah, yeah it's interesting to see if uh, Chinese Taipei can create that that intensity and pressure on them. Very much. Kazakhstan rallied for a while there yesterday as well. They they're slowly getting there. I think. Uh, the philosophy they're using, the new coach seems to be getting them into space a bit more than they have been. And the young man uh, Baratov, who used to play scrum half, he was uh, he stepped up as playmaker as well. So they're looking a lot more positive. Yeah, they, it's the best I've seen Kazakhstan at the tournament in some time. And uh, yeah, to, to win their first game and then, and then you know, run Korea close for about eight or nine minutes of that game, Korea pulling away in the end. But it was a, it was a good game to watch. Here's Holgate. Rips it out the back to Jones. The Welsh combination there. <laughs> and Wangabulangi decides he's had enough. He's happy to rest until the semi-final. And uh, Sri Lanka take the victory over the Philippines in this quarter-final. 22 points to 12. Tough game, great game, uh, and a great start to the quarter-finals. Right, offside. Oh, fuck me, man. 